In this video, I want to discuss the concept of white privilege. And it's a simple concept that is, has become, that is controversial and it, it really shouldn't be. And what I mean by it's controversial is that, to be honest, a lot of white, not a lot, but some white people get really upset when you talk about white privilege. They feel like you're blaming them for, um, for, for being racist and causing problems. Um, give you an example. My uh, last summer, I, I went to a family reunion, and to be quite honest, I didn't realize how racist some of my extended family was until I was at this reunion. So to set the stage, you have two um, retired white guys who were talking about their experience with African Americans. So the context for this is they both worked as guards at a maximum security prison. And so their only um, context or experience with, or I should say their main experience with African Americans are those who are, who are incarcerated at this maximum security prison. And they were saying, oh, I get so tired of hearing hearing these black people talking about um, about slavery. You, they've never they've never picked cotton and I've never owned a slave. And they're kind of missing the point of uh, this concept white privilege because they're, they're trying to say that because they weren't directly involved in r racism, um, some of the explicit racism of the past, that it's not an issue anymore. And, and they really missed the point. So let's talk about what white privilege is. And if you are white, uh, keep an open mind. This is not saying it's your fault. We're not blaming you for the problems of the past. And we're also not saying that you are racist. It's trying to understand that there's a system in place that sometimes um, leads to racism and prejudice. <clears throat> All right, so here's a simple definition of white privilege. A right, advantage, or immunity granted to or enjoyed by white persons beyond the common advantage of all others, and exemption in many particular cases from certain burdens or liabilities. Well, that's kind of a wordy definition, but let's break it apart. So think about this as a right or an advantage. I think it's easier to understand it as an advantage. What we're saying is that by virtue of being white, which at the current time is the majority in the United States. Um, there's actually some research that's suggesting by a certain time in the future, white people will actually be the minority in the United States. But for the moment, we can say uh, <clears throat> that there is some advantages to being white. Um, I'll just use myself. I'm white and uh, you know I apply for a job. I don't have to worry about people discriminating against me. Now you might say, well, no one's going to know you're black t until they see you, so that's not going to prevent you from getting an interview. There's actually some research, it's kind of interesting research, where they had uh, employers read fictitious job applicants, and then they, um, they changed the name um, of the applicant to make them sound um, more African American. So for example, instead of the person's name being Todd, which is a traditional white name, maybe the person's name, first name was Tyrone. Or instead of um, Laura, the person's first name was Leticia. So they pick names that were more that are more common among African American. And just putting that name in, giving the same bios, the same exact job application, and just changing the name to a name that sounds black led to people led to these employers choosing the the, the um, non-black name and so there is so the point of this is there are some advantages and it's not saying that anybody who's white is responsible for them it's just what this is saying is that because you're um, a certain race you get some certain um, passes some things that you are immune to some things uh, think about, and sometimes what I found was some students, the easiest way for them to understand this is to think of terms of other types of privilege. <coughs> so 
So this term white privilege, as you'll see, as I mentioned in the lecture notes, has been expanded to other areas. I think the easiest way to understand it is think of it as gender privilege. I'm male, and I identify as male, and so there are certain advantages I have. Like, uh, think about it at work. If something needs to be moved, someone's not going to ask me, do you need help with that? They're going to assume because I'm male I can pick it up or that I can do certain things. So there are certain advantages to being a male. And if you're a female, a lot of times people think you're not capable of doing this or that or you have certain limitations. And so that's really what white privilege is, ha is saying. It's not saying that an individual white person is doing something racist. It's just saying that there are certain types of um, biases and issues they don't have to face. And it's not because of anything they're doing, it just happens to be who they are. <clears throat> and, um, and that's what it really kind of comes down to. Uh, and some people say, well, you know, blah, 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 this is saying that I'm, I'm racist. It's not saying that. It's just saying that there are certain systems in place. For example, think about some of our language. Like we talk about people having fair skin. Well, fair skin is another way of saying white skin because it's very lighter skin. And this was an ad put out by a, a group talking about some of the, these type of things. Um, but think about like um, <coughs> there was a movie back in the 80s. I think it was Boys in the Hood. I'm not 100% sure which movie it was. But one of the characters was pointing out a lot of things in language like black is seen as bad or evil. White is seen as good. Um, bad guys wear black hats um, and dress in black and white and um, heroes have a white hat like with the cowboys. If you go back to the cowboy movies, the white hats versus the black hats. Um, and we talk about things being white, being pure, um, and, and black being dark and evil. And the person in this movie is making the point that even though these are just common um, terms, they do have an, uh, an impact on how people um, view certain things. And so because we have these connotations connected to the terms black and white, then it should not be too surprising that there are some biases and prejudices against black people because that's associated. I'll give you another example, um, being left-handed, which I am. Being left-handed has historically been seen as evil. If you look at the history of left-handedness, left it is connected to evil. Um, if you look at the Christian Bible, there's some passage where it talks about all the good people are on the right hand of God and all the sinners are on the left hand of God. Um, and the fact that um, the study of left-handedness is sometimes called sinistrality, which comes from the word sinister. Um, and if you look at uh, why do you shake with the right hand? There's a reason behind it. Because in most cultures, before we had uh, our modern hygiene, uh, most cultures used their left hand for toileting behavior. And they used their right hand for eating because they didn't have the soap and disinfectants that we have. So you wouldn't want to basically offer somebody your poop hand, your, your butt wiping hand, to shake. That would be offensive, so you use your right hand. And so the left hand has historically been um, seen negatively. And so think about, there are, and think about being right-handed. There are some privileges to being right-handed. Um, I, I can tell you from being left-handed, I know it's a cliche, but scissors. Scissors are sometimes hard to use. I don't know why, but even when you flip them over, they are harder to use left-handed. Um, and a lot of things are just designed for the right-handed world. A guitar. Guitars, you have to get a special guitar that's strung the opposite way. And what's always interesting is people say, well, if you're left-handed, why don't you just play it the, the right-handed way? It'd be much easier. And it's like, okay, if that's true, then why don't right-handed people flip it over and use it the other way? Um, so, again, it's those type of things. And that's what I'm hoping you'll see is that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, there are certain advantages, if we go back to this term, advantages to people who are right-handed because of the way the world's designed. Um, 
And if you look back in the history at one time, um, it was before my generation, but my parents' generation, if they were left-handed, they were forced to use their right hands in school because people thought that would be that they shouldn't use their left hand to write and do, or their left hand to write and do stuff. Um, so think about how that kind of went from being something that was discriminated against to something that you could argue is still a privilege today. So I'm hoping this helps you kind of understand the concept of white privilege. We're taking the idea uh, that there being certain advantages and think about, I don't think any right-handed people are out to get me or, or are discriminating against me on purpose. Um, it's just there are certain privileges to being um, right-handed. So try to think of it in terms of those type of um, issues.